so what if I told you guys that this whole time you thought you were waiting for God to hopefully someday speak directly into your life, but God is actually the one who has been waiting for you to hear what he's been speaking to your life all along? What if I told you that? What if I told you that the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you long before you knew who the Holy Spirit was? And what if I told you that it is actually possible for you to hear directly what the Holy Spirit is saying to your life? Quick recap for those of you, maybe you're just joining us and you didn't get a chance to catch up on the YouTubes yet. In week one, we learned that the Holy Spirit is not an it or a force. Right? So maybe you're new to church and you're like, ah, ghost, this sounds kind of weird. The Holy Spirit is a person. Right? We learn that the Holy Spirit has emotion. We learn that the Holy Spirit is our friend. We learn that the Holy Spirit is the most gentle, patient, kind person you've ever met in your life. The Holy Spirit is the bomb.com. In week two, we learned that the Holy Spirit is who? God. And not only is the Holy Spirit God, but we learn that the Holy Spirit, believe it or not, is actually the hero behind every single one of our favorite biblical stories. And last but certainly not least, we learned that the same Holy Spirit that empowered David, the same Holy Spirit that empowered Gideon, the same Holy Spirit that empowered Esther, the same Holy Spirit that empowered Mary, the same Holy Spirit that empowered Jesus to do everything he's done on earth is inside every single person who is a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm going to try that one again. (laughs) Thank you, Aaron. I was hoping somebody else would be excited about that. Okay, who cares if you don't even know what that means? The Bible literally says that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the grave. He was dead, like his pulse was gone. They put him in a tomb, and they sealed the thing and put a guard in front of it, and the Holy Spirit brought him from death to life. And the Bible says that same spirit, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, is made available to you. Is that exciting to anybody else? The Holy Spirit is available And as we're going to see today, not only is the Holy Spirit available in some theoretical, like, you know, I got the Holy Spirit waiting. No, the Holy Spirit is close. And the Holy Spirit wants to speak directly to your life. Here's how we left it off last week in Acts chapter 2. Jesus' disciples, Jesus told them to wait after he came back from the grave. The Holy Spirit came down. They experienced the Holy Spirit. People around them were like, I don't know what's going on in here. Some thought they were drunk and some were just confused. And then Peter gets up and he explains what's going on. And Peter says this, right? He quoted the prophet Joel, which I think is kind of cool that hundreds of years ago, the Holy Spirit inspired the prophet Joel to say something. And then the same Holy Spirit is like, hey, Peter, why don't you go back to what I said before and use it to learn the people. And then Peter says this, in the last days, God says, this is the promise. This is the prophecy. In the last days, we said last week, is our days, right? Last days is not end times. Last days is today. In the last days, in your days, today, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I said this last week. I'll say it again. This is not supposed to happen. Okay, this is not, when Peter said this, everybody's jaw probably hit the ground and their tongue rolled out like in the cartoon because this is not supposed to happen. If you know just a little bit of biblical context in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit only came on rare occasions on rare people. Okay, so up until this point, only the prophets and select leaders got the Holy Spirit. Right? Everybody else was on the outside looking in. And then all of a sudden, Acts chapter 2 comes, and Peter's like, guess what? Things have changed. Now everybody gets the Holy Spirit. Let me put it in perspective for you. Uh, if it's not clicking, 
two weeks ago, I was working on this message, and I texted Shannon, and I was like, hey, I need something. I need, like, a little something for an illustration during this message. And normally, I give her, like, two days or two hours, usually, because that's how it comes. I'm like, hey, you got two hours to get me. Can I get a monkey on stage? Because it's really going to help me communicate the message, you know. She's like, I'll do my best, <laughs> right? This one, I gave two weeks. And the reason I gave two weeks is I'm like, okay, I, I just knew that, hey, what I need is going to take a while. Like, this is, like, rare. You may have to call a couple museums up. Like, we may have to know somebody. Like, I don't know if you can find this. But if you can find it, I think it will really help, you know, drive the message home. And guess what? Three days later, she's like, I found it. I was like, I cannot believe it. And so a hand to Shannon. Thank you for being so resourceful. You guys ready? This will blow your mind, I promise. This is, this is like insane, okay? If you, have, you might want to pull your phone out, take some pictures, TikTok, whatever it is that you kids are doing these days. But this is amazing, all right? Oh, man, this is great. I got to be careful here so I don't break it. Can I get a little drum roll? Anybody excited? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready? Woo! Some of you, this is like the first time you'll ever see this. I'm trying to, oh, man, look at that. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Woo! There it is. Whoa! Woo! Can you believe it? Legit. This is not fake. This is not one of the fancy ones for, no, no, this is legit. This thing weighs about 30 pounds, okay? Normally I use a handheld. I'm like, I don't think I can hold the handheld and this when I preach, so give me the Britney mic. But, but we found it. This is amazing. And, um, and if you're 18 and younger, you don't know what this is. Ask your parents on the way home. <laughs> they can explain to you. Um, <laughs> that's good. I got it from Jim's house. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Some jokes just write themselves. That's right. That was good. That was good. I wasn't even going to do this, but I got it. This, this, I, 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 I can't help it. Um, wait, Ryan, it, it, do you know what this is? Can you stand, stand up for a second, Ryan. How old are you, Ryan? He's 15. Do you know what this is? You know how to use it? Show me how to use it. This is impressive. How would you use it? Let's say if you had it, what would you do? What would you do? No. Nope. Yeah, he's missing his step. Uh, yeah. No, no. Uh, oh, give him a hand for trying. A for effort. <laughs> I, I got this earlier this week, and I actually called Liz in my office. I was like, hey, Liz, how do you use this? And she's like, oh, I got it. I'm like, yeah, show me. And she was like, go like this. I'm like, no, you're missing. She got nervous. You missed the first step. Do you know what the first step is? What were you missing? You got to pick it up. Yeah, come on now. Got to pick it up. Get that dial tone. Hope no one's on dial up, you know. All right. Does this bring back memories for anybody? Anybody, like, remember this somewhere in your kitchen, your home somewhere? Anybody still got this besides Jim? Anybody still rocking it? <laughs> the other Jim raises his hand. <laughs> Anyone got one that still works? That would be amazing. Okay, that's it. It works? That's amazing, the prize. That, that's incredible. And, and, I, and I, this, some of this is probably context dependent, and I get that because I grew up, if you didn't know, Lagos, Nigeria, third world country, and so we're behind, you know, for a while. But, but I remember... There was a season in my life, and this is a true story, where we were the only house on our street that had one of these. Okay, like we're the only ones. Like kids would come to our house and be like, can we see it? You know? And I'm like, yeah, man, you can take a peek. Don't touch it. Though. We were the only. I knew one friend. There was a season in my life. I knew only one friend who also had a phone in his house, right? And we were like best friends because they had a phone and we had a phone and we couldn't even call each other, right? It's not like I could call him. I couldn't call him because it was too expensive to call him and I couldn't call him because, and I don't know, again, maybe this is like an African thing, but my dad would put a lock on the phone. Did anybody, anybody remember the lock? Is that a thing? Like, like you, he bought a lock, this is true, and you would put a lock on it, that way you couldn't turn the dial to make a call because it was too expensive. And the only time that we would use the phone really is when my sister would schedule a call. Anybody old enough to remember when you had to schedule before you call somebody? You know what I'm talking about? Like you have to like, hey, we're going to call Sunday at 5 o'clock. That's what it was like for us. And it's like 4.30, and we're all sitting around the phone like, oh, it's going to ring. This is awesome. My sister was in the U.S., you know. I'm like, and it would ring, and we would all freak out. My dad would pick up the phone and talk. And it was so amazing because I don't think we really even got to talk. Like my dad, he would just be like, yeah, they're here. Yeah, yeah, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. He's, like, He's doing great. Great. And I'm like, I talked on the phone. <laughs> and I'd go to school the next day, like, yeah, I spoke on the phone yesterday. My friend's like, no, you done my I did. And my sister called from Phoenix, Arizona. It was incredible. I didn't really speak, but my dad spoke, you know, but it was enough. Do me a favor. 
Pull out your phone if you've got a phone in here. Everybody's got a phone. Everybody pull out your phone. Pull out your smartphone. Turn the flashlight on and hold it up. Okay, if you don't have a phone that has a flashlight, we'll have a prayer team later to my right. <laughs> I'd love to pray for you. Pull out your phone. Just keep it up for a little bit. Just keep it up and you can look around. Everybody can look around and see it. Keep your phone up. Just keep it up for a second, okay? All over the room, look at that. Everybody's got a phone with a flashlight on. Just hang for a second, okay? You ready? Right, if you could throw that verse back up there again. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. This is what Peter is saying. This is the contrast that he's making. Peter is trying to contrast this with this. Peter is saying, hey, just so you know, there was a time where the Holy Spirit coming on people was not only rare, but it happened to rare people. There was a time where the only way to hear the Holy Spirit was through the prophet. Only the prophet could talk to the Holy Spirit, and God only spoke in spurts. God spoke at rare times, and the only way the common folk, the ordinary person, could hear from God is if God, at a certain time, decided to send his spirit on a prophet or on a leader, and then that leader would talk to God, and then the leader would come to the normal people and say, here's what God is saying. But in the last days, Peter says, I will pour out my spirit. Translation, you get a phone, you get a phone, you get a phone, you get a phone, you get a phone. Everybody gets a phone. You can put your phone down. I think you get the point. The Holy Spirit is available to everybody. This was unheard of. And what I'm hoping that you'll see this morning, fam, don't miss this, is that the Holy Spirit is not only available to you, but guess what? The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. (laughs) It's like you not only have, I mean, it was unfathomable when I was a kid when we had that guy to think that someday I would have my own phone in my pocket. That was, I couldn't even imagine that. And Peter said, no, no, not only do you have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you directly. Can I show you? Listen to what Jesus says. This is amazing. I hope you're all excited. This is going to change everything. I promise you. That's not hype. John chapter 16, if you have your Bible, listen to what Jesus says. Jesus said this. He says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear. I love that. It's like y'all can't handle the heat, okay? So I'm just going to be, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep it small for now. Then he says this. He says, but when he, the spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, comes. So this is before Acts chapter 2. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's like, y'all don't know nothing about this, but the Holy Spirit's going to come. And when he comes, here's what he's going to do. We're going to talk about this next week. He will guide you into all truth. He will speak. He will not speak, right? If you've got a Bible, underline the word speak. On his own, he will speak. Somebody say speak. Only what he hears. And he will tell. Somebody says tell. Tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make. Somebody say known. Known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. And that is why the Spirit will receive from me what he will make. Where's that word again? Say it with me. Known to you. I don't know if you're counting, but that's four times. Six, if you include the ones that were repeated, where Jesus is telling his followers... That the Holy Spirit's going to talk to you. He's saying the Holy Spirit's going to come and he's going to guide you. He's not going to just speak on his own. He's going to speak what he hears. Not only is he going to speak what he hears, the Holy Spirit will tell you what is yet to come. And there are some things that are going to come from me, Jesus says. The Holy Spirit will make it known to you. I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way before, but the Holy Spirit loves to speak. I know somebody that likes to talk a lot. He's in the second row. (laughs) The Holy Spirit's like that. The Holy Spirit loves to speak to followers of Jesus. How do we know that? We know that because Jesus just said over and over again, he's going to speak. He's going to tell you things. He's going to guide you. He's going to reveal to you what I tell him. And we also know that because we see that all through Scripture. Go read the New Testament. Go read the book of Acts. And over and over and over again, you know what you'll find? You'll find the Holy Spirit speaking to followers of Jesus. 
Fam, make no mistake about it. The Holy Spirit speaking directly to people who follow Jesus is the norm in the New Testament. People didn't do what we do now. People didn't show up at church on Sunday going, ah, man, I hope I hear from God. I hope the pastor's got something to say to me. I mean, they did that. Then they went home knowing the Holy Spirit's going to speak to me. They're driving to work on Monday going, Holy Spirit's going to speak to me. Tuesday, the Holy Spirit's going to speak to me. Wednesday, the Holy Spirit's going to speak to me. All through the week, the Holy Spirit's going to speak to me. It was the norm in the New Testament that the Holy Spirit would speak to followers of Jesus Christ. But somewhere along the line, something got lost in translation. And we went from that to showing up on Sunday morning and saying, man, I just hope that pastor's got something for me. Can I tell you something that maybe you've never heard from a pastor before? I don't have any access to hearing from God that you don't have. Like, I don't have a secret line. <laughs> like, come check my phone. Look at my favorites. You see my family and my friends and Josh and Matt Harsh and a bunch of people. You're not going to find Holy Spirit there. Right? I ain't got one of these in my house somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's just like, all right, Holy Spirit, what you got for them this week? Like, like, there is no special access to me. And I'm not saying that to diminish my role as a pastor. I'm just making sure that you don't confuse the gift of communication and preaching with hearing from the Holy Spirit. Just because I can get up here and talk and be engaging and funny don't mean that I can hear something that you can't hear. Again, I'm not trying to diminish my role. I'm just letting you know that you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit loves to speak through ordinary people. The Holy Spirit loves to speak to common folk. The Holy Spirit loves to speak to people who think they can't hear from God. And it is time that you stop disqualifying yourself. If you are of a follower of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you the same way the Holy Spirit speaks to me. We have the exact same access. And my hope is that, man, we get to a point in our church where we're hearing God so much, y'all show up and go, I don't even know if you have anything to say, bro. I've been hearing the Holy Spirit the whole week. <laughs> I mean, if you want to put a little cherry on top, that would be great. <laughs> But I'm coming here with some fire in my bones because he's been speaking to me. Holy Spirit, speaking to you. I don't know what season of life you're in right now. I don't know what you brought in here today. Some of you are doing great. Some of you are doing amazing. Some of you are grieving. Some of you are in pain. Some of you are anxious. Some of you are worried. Some of you barely slept last night. Some of us are deep in addiction, deep in sin, lost. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I want to speak directly to that. Imagine if you could hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in your pain, in your anxiety, in your confusion, directly from God. Can I make this practical for us? I want to share four ways that we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you have a pen and paper, please take notes. I try not to say this too often. I'm not trying to make it awkward, but my job is to plant the seed. Your job is to take it home and water it, make sure it grows, right? It's really hard to do that if you don't remember what seed was planted. It's hard to remember if you don't document it. And so take pictures of the screen, put it in your notes. This is not, I mean, I, I'm doing my job. I'm, I'm, I'm piecing out after this, but, but this is for you to take and cultivate. I really do believe that God wants to do something that's beyond anything I could say this morning. And I just need us to lean into that. So I want to share with you guys four ways. It's not exhaustive, but these are four ways that I believe that we can actually hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The first one is we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit by faith through God's word. And everybody said, <laughs> right? I mean, come on now. How quiet it was. <laughs> you guys are like, ah, oh, I knew it. He built it up so much. And it's like, oh, man, I thought this was going to be amazing. <laughs> man, word of God, of course, preacher man. <laughs> All right? It's like when my wife and I went to Mexico for our 10-year anniversary, and they're like, complimentary. You get a free 90-minute massage, couple's massage. It's like, this is awesome. Uh, you just have to fill out a little questionnaire. I'm like, who cares? 
90 minutes hearing about a timeshare. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, this is your little questionnaire right here. But I'm stubborn, so I'm like, I ain't leaving this place. I'm getting that massage. <laughs> And I feel like if we're honest, for some of us in here, that feels like a letdown. Right? I just said you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, and you're like, come on, Pastor, lay it on me. Sorry, not sorry, but the primary way that the Holy Spirit speaks to us is through the Word of God. I wish there was another way, <laughs> but that's it. Listen to what Jesus says. This is Jesus himself in John chapter 14, verse 26. Jesus says this, speaking of the Holy Spirit. He says, but when the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he's taking you, the Holy Spirit's going to come. And here's what the Holy Spirit's going to do. Jesus is saying this. He's like, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things, and the Holy Spirit will do what? Will remind you of everything I've said to you. I'm going to say that again because it takes a second for you to see what Jesus is doing here. He says, when the Spirit comes, the Spirit will remind you of everything that I have said to you. Question, how is the Holy Spirit going to remind us of what Jesus has already said if we don't know what Jesus has already said? The assumption that Jesus is making in this passage is that you know. <laughs> He's like, so I've said some things already. The Holy Spirit's going to come, and the Holy Spirit's job is to speak to your life by reminding you of what I have already said. The problem with so much of us is not that God is not speaking to you. The Holy Spirit speaking to you. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. The problem is we don't even know what God's already said. And so if we don't know what God's already said about our situation, what's the Holy Spirit going to remind us of? How many of us have said this? Man, if only God could just give me a sign so I knew that God was with me. You ever said that? Like, just give me a sign. Can I just have a sign? Can I have a dream? Maybe I'm driving down the road. There's like a rainbow and a unicorn or something. A cloud's form. Like, Sammy, go. I'm like, I, I just need to know. Like, if I knew that God was with me, man, I could do anything. We say things like this. And I wonder if the whole time God's going, are you kidding me? I already said that. Jesus says and lo, I will be with you always. I heard a pastor say, he'll be with you even if your name is not Lo. <laughs> Get that in a second. There it is. How many times have we said, man, if only I could just know that God loves me. Man, I'm just so messed up, man. I'm just, I'm just so jacked up. You don't understand. I've, just, I've got so many issues. You know, I, if God could just tell me and just show me that he loves me. And God's like, I already did. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I already told you that nothing, 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 nothing will be able to separate you from my love. Absolutely nothing but God. My life is falling apart. I've got so much anxiety. Can you speak into my anxiety? And Jesus is going, I already did. Philippians 4, do not be anxious about anything but in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. If you do that, guess what? The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. But God, the world is so broken now. The world in Ukraine and things are crazy. I don't even know what to think. And God's going, I know. I already told you that in this world you will have trouble but take heart for I have overcome the world. I already told you. But God, this stinks. Life's not going good right now. Man. My, my heart is just, I'm just sad and I'm just depressed and God's like, I know. I feel for you. But remember what I already said? Sorrow may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Could it be that the problem is not the Holy Spirit isn't speaking? The problem is most of us don't know what God has already said. And so we're like, God, oh, speak to me, speak to me. He's like, I already did. And if you knew it, and I'm telling you guys, and I know when I say stuff like this, it sounds so self-serving because you're like, you're a pastor. I, I don't get any special credit for you guys reading the Bible. At least not that I know of, right? You get anything in the paycheck, babe? You do all the books. You don't get nothing? Okay, all right. It would be great if I got a bonus every time one of you started reading the Bible. Like, oh, sweet. This is awesome. 
It's for you. God's not going to love you anymore. He already has. The Bible says that. You'll see that if you read the Bible. You start reading the Bible because you think God will love you more. And then you read it and it goes, oh, he says right there. He's not going to love me anymore than he already does. But if you want to know how much he loves you, you may want to read the Bible. If you want God to speak to you in your pain, I've shared this story before, but I will never forget. This is true. I remember, I don't know, 20 years ago, my whole life was falling apart. And I would sit in the old west stand in my room by myself, feeling like I had nothing. And guess what? I would start going back. And the Holy Spirit, I didn't know if it was the Holy Spirit then, but the Holy Spirit would start reminding me of all the stories that I learned growing up in the Bible. All right, my mom's watching. I'm so thankful for my mom. I'm so thankful, oh, man, that she gave us what we needed and not what we wanted. I'm thankful that she immersed us in Scripture. I'm thankful she made us, made, made, made us memorize Scripture. I'm thankful that she took us to the house of God and put us in a place where we got to hear the words of God. And I'll be honest with you guys, I rolled my eyes until I left the house. Every time I went to church, and mom's like, here's another Bible story, and here's another memory verse. And I'm just like, oh, this is so lame and so stupid. Until my world started falling apart. And guess what? I started going back to those same stories, and I remember sitting on my floor just going, man, I remember what you did for Abraham. I remember what you did for Jacob. I remember what you did for David. I remember what you did through Scripture. And if you came through for them, then you're going to come through for me. If you didn't fail them, then you're not going to fail me. All I had was the truth of God's word that the Holy Spirit was reminding me. And this is not really the sermon, but parents, this is why you got to immerse your kids in Scripture. Bring them to the house of God. Let them sit and learn. Take the little PDF that Evelyn just showed us. Have conversation. There is not a day, and I'm not saying this to brag. There is not a day that goes by in our house that my wife's not sitting at our table opening that little devotion. We've gone through it a million times sharing Bible stories with our kids. And we're not doing that because I'm a pastor, you know, someone's watching right now, better, you know. Like, I'm not, I don't preach any sermons to my kids. No, we're doing that because I want my kids to hear God. And if one of the ways the Holy Spirit, primary ways the Holy Spirit speaks to us is through the word of God, how are my kids going to hear what the Holy Spirit's saying if they don't already know what the Holy Spirit has said? We bring our kids every single Sunday, not because we have to. We bring them because we want the seed to be planted in their life. Because we know that there's going to come a day where they're going to be on their own. And they're going to have to make a decision. And I am trusting that when that day comes, the Holy Spirit will do what Jesus says he's going to do here. The Holy Spirit will remind them of what Jesus has already said. Here's how uh, Pastor Louis put it. He says, those who know God's word the best hear his voice the most. I dare you to find me somebody, and I'm not talking about just being super religious and being like, oh, you know, like, you know, no, no, like someone who truly loves God's word because they love God. I dare you to find me somebody who loves this, who doesn't hear the voice of God clearly. Those who know it, those who memorize it, those who meditate on it, hear his voice declare us. I'm going to give you a couple pro tips. These aren't really pro tips. They're like amateur trips, but pro tip sounds better than than practical tips. But just if you don't know where to start, just a couple pro tips for reading the Bible real quick. Start small. We've talked about this before. Think first downs, not touchdowns. Start small. For the last year and a half, I've been reading. Uh, if you're wondering why my paper's falling apart, I've been reading the Gospel of John five verses at a time. I don't read more than five verses. That's it. I read five verses. I highlight it. I just this week finished it. I don't know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I'm serious. It's not a race. The goal is not to get through it as fast as you can. The goal is to let it get through you as deep as it can. And most of the time, that means that we start small. So just read a few verses, memorize a verse, just start small. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. There is not a sermon. If you guys knew what my sermon prep was, you would laugh. (laughs) It's basically me sitting at my desk every time I open the Bible and I'm like, I got nothing. (laughs) Right? It's like Word document. My wife used technology. Like, how far are you in the sermon? I'm like, well, sometimes I'll send her a screenshot. There's like one word. Then I say, Holy Spirit, will you please show me 
And just like that, I'm not making this up. I'll see things in Scripture that I never saw before. Last week I was preparing a sermon. I saw something in the Gospel of Luke, and I literally did a twirl in my office by myself. <laughs> it was so exciting. I didn't put it in the sermon because not everything's for the pulpit. I'm like, I'm going to keep that one special for myself. I don't know if that's good or not, but I'm like, I'm going to keep that insight to myself. That's exciting. Ask Google for help. <laughs> Every week I'm Googling something. <laughs> What's this mean? You know, any commentaries? And then have some fun with it. Can we have fun with reading the Bible? Is that okay? I do smiley faces. I write emoji things. I, oh, I, I have a lot of fun. My little, little lad came in our room the other day. This is a true story this week, right? Little lad was like, Daddy, because we're reading the Bible story book. She's like, my favorite book of all the books we have is the Bible. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? <laughs> all right? I'm like, can you say that again so I can record this and play this to you 10 years from now? <laughs> the reason she says that is because we make it fun. We got a little devotion. I don't know what you picture when you hear, like, every, I saw, we've been reading this Bible book to her the other night. Last night, we're reading, like, I don't know, it was the lost sheep. And so I was like, all right, Eden and Nora, you guys are the lost sheep. And they're like, ah. I'm like, Lola, you're the shepherd. Okay, one of you is lost. And Nora hid behind the chair. And then you're the shepherd. Go find her. And now you got to go on her back and go celebrate with your friends. And Nora's trying to climb on her back. And they're laughing. It's like, yeah, it's the story of the lost sheep, you know. I don't know if they remember any of it, but it's fun. And I'm hoping someday the Holy Spirit will use it to remind them. Start small, ask the Holy Spirit for ask Google for help. Have some fun with it. Show yourself lots of grace. The second way we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit is by faith through an inner voice. Here we go. Turn with me, if you have a Bible, to the third chapter of one of the best books in the Bible, a.k.a. the book that was named after me, 1 Samuel. <laughs> I mean, David's a cool name, but there's no book of David in the Bible, so just saying. There is a James, but only five chapters. <laughs> Samuel's got 55 chapters. Not that I'm keeping score, but 55 to 5, you know. My mom thought I was special. She named me after a book of the Bible. I love it. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. This is a great story. Listen, I wish we had so much time on this, but listen to this, okay. It says, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord. Under Eli. Eli was the prophet and the priest at the time, right? This is a long story, but hang with me here. It's amazing. It says, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There weren't many visions. In other words, they had the rotary phone, right? Like, it was like scheduled calls. God wasn't speaking that often. And then listen to what happens. It says in verse 2, one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak he could barely see, he lost his glasses, didn't get LASIK surgery. He was just walking around stumbling. He was laying down in his usual place. The lamp of the Lord had not gone out. So Samuel, this little boy, was laying in the house of God where the ark of God was. And he says, then the Lord, hear this, called out to Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, you ring? Here I am. And he said to Eli, here I am, you called me. But Eli said to him, this is awesome. He's like, bro, it's 1 a.m. in the morning. What are you doing? I didn't call you. Go back to sleep, man. I'm just trying to sleep. I'm an old man. Let me sleep, okay? So he went back and laid down. Again, he says, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and ran up to Eli. And he says, here I am. You called me. All right, this is like when Eden came in the other night. My wife and I had to sleep in. All of a sudden, I heard daddy, daddy. And I was like, what in the world? She's standing right there next to my bed. <laughs> She's like, I'm scared. I'm like, I'm scared. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Got to go change my underwear now. That was, that was like it was a face in my face at 3 in the morning. All right. Samuel goes to Eli. He's like, you called me? Eli's like, no. I didn't call you, bro. I drew angry eyebrows in this part of my verse. Have fun with reading the Bible. I'm like, he's probably not happy at this point, man. He's just trying to get some sleep. And then he says this in verse 7. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord, he says, had not yet been revealed to him. So a third time, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up, and he ran to Eli, and he says, here I am. And then he says this, then Eli, what did he do? Realized that the Lord was the one trying to speak to the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go lay down, and if he calls you again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel's like, okay. <laughs> so he goes back in his little sleeping bag, pulls the thing up, and he lays down. And the Lord comes again. Ring, ring, ring. Called. Samuel. Sammy. Sam. And Samuel said, speak, 
for your servant is listening. What's happening here, if you're not catching it, is God wanted to speak to Samuel. And Samuel didn't know it because he didn't recognize the voice of God and God's voice was not familiar to him. Three times God's calling him. The problem in this passage is not that God wasn't speaking. The problem is Samuel didn't recognize the voice of God. And he wasn't familiar with the voice of God. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always assumed that if God spoke to me audibly, we would be able to tell, right? Like, it's God, right? Probably sounds like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Probably deep and loud, like, I'm God. <laughs> like, like, I feel like if God spoke to me, I'd be like, oh, that's the Lord. <laughs> but apparently not. This dude heard the audible voice of God, and he went to an old man. Like, do you call me? And I know it's a little bit different, and I know the context is different. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But is it possible that we have the same problem? Is it possible that in the same way, don't miss this, that Samuel was not familiar with the voice of God, we're not familiar with the voice of the Holy Spirit? Is it possible that in the same way that Samuel didn't recognize the audible voice of God, we don't recognize the inner voice of the Holy Spirit? And again, I know it's a little bit different, but the question when you read this passage is not, is God speaking? God was clearly speaking. The problem is Samuel didn't recognize the voice of God. And I'm willing to bet, and I don't know this for sure, but for everybody in this room who say I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, I bet the Holy Spirit is speaking to you way, way more than you know. You just don't recognize it, and you're just not familiar with the voice of the Holy Spirit. Or to put it in context of our conversation last week, you are not aware of the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so you're not awake to what he's trying to say to you. And what I'm trying to encourage and challenge you this morning, what would it look like for you to say yes to the inner voice of the Holy Spirit by faith? Right? I mean, if people ask you, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, how, how, you're saved? What does that mean? You, you believe? How, how, it's by faith, right? Like we accept Jesus by faith, right? We, we say yes to, to his death and his resurrection, the gift of salvation by faith. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit's the same thing. We experience the Holy Spirit by faith. And so if you want to hear God, what I'm hoping you will see this morning is the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in your inner voice, but you're going to have to accept and listen by faith. I'll give you an example. About 16 or so years ago, my wife and I, um, I don't even know if we remember if we're married at this point, but, but I was a part, this is the first ministry I was a part of. I was a part of a ministry called Peace House. It was amazing. They asked me to speak every once in a while. This is when I first started discovering that I could kind of talk. And so whenever they would ask me, I'd be like, this is amazing. Once a month, I would speak. And then finally, they're like, we want you to lead the whole thing. And I was like, this is it. I've been dreaming about this my whole life. I've, I mean, I've, I've like, I've like, this is it. I'm like, I can't wait to do it. And then all of a sudden, you remember this? <laughs> I felt like the Holy Spirit said, in a voice, I, I want you to step down from everything. Only job I had, dream. And I remember I went to Big B, right, on Seacorn Central with my pastor boss then, and he, I'm like, can, can we meet for coffee? I got to talk to you. We sat there, and I went in the bathroom, right? You know how you got to go in the bathroom before a meeting just to clear your head? And I knelt down in the bathroom, which is kind of disgusting, but I didn't care. <laughs> and I was like, God, I'm like, this is either the dumbest decision I've ever made in my life, or this is you. There's no in-between, right? Like, this is the dream. They just offered me the role and the job, and, and I feel this voice inside of me is trying to say, I don't think you should do it. And so I go, I sit at a table next to him. And as I sat down, I'll never forget. Like there was, the sun came out and it just kind of shone on my side of the table. And I was like, I don't know if that's random, but I'm going to take that as a sign. <laughs> and I told him, I'm like, I'm done. And he looked at me like I was crazy. He's like, you've been waiting for this. I'm like, I know. He's like, do you have another job? I'm like, no. 
no backup, no gig, no job, no ministry. I just felt that the Holy Spirit was telling me, Sammy, I want you to step down from that. Will you trust me by faith? Will you listen to this voice? And so I step down and I go home and I tell Ashley, I'm like, oh, we got nothing now. So uh, congratulations, you married a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Month after that, I felt that same voice say to me, Sammy, I, I want you to, I, I got four messages I want you to preach. Right? You know, like, like and, I, and I felt like these were the four things God wanted me to say. And I was like, oh, sweet, we're starting a ministry. This is great. And God's like, no. In fact, the Holy Spirit said, no, I want you to do, I don't even want you to name it. Like, you're not starting anything. I want you to just reserve a room at UT, invite any students that are going to come, and I want you to preach for four weeks, and that's it. We called it the four-week thing. <laughs> People are like, what's it called? I'm like, I don't know, it's a four-week thing. I got four messages. If you want to come, come. That's it. There's no promo. Like, are we going to start anything? We're not starting anything. I just, I, I just feel like I got four messages. Preach the four messages. One of the messages God gave me was about how we should be a voice for the voiceless around the world. Two months after that, God opened an opportunity at a church for me to share that same message. I stepped in. I shared it. Amazing things happened. That summer, I was on a mission trip somewhere. I don't remember where it was. I'll never forget this. I was in the shower. And I was just like, God, you gave me this message. It's burning up inside of me. I don't have a platform. I don't have anywhere to preach it. I just know that you gave me this message. And I'm just trying to follow you by faith. And so will you just show me? What do you want me to do? Like I, I'm like, and I felt like God, that same inner voice, said, I want you to dream big. Dream. What's the biggest dream you can come up with? And I'm like, oh, I love dreaming. And I was like, this is a true story. I wrote all this, this all in my journal. I was like, I was like oh, man, I, there's this band in Toledo named Sanctus Real. I've never heard. I've never met them. But apparently they're amazing. I'm like, man, what if Sanctus Real did a concert and they let me speak? Oh, man, that would be amazing. There will be 500 people in the room. It will be so great. And I remember the Holy Spirit said, dream bigger. And I left and I wrote in my journal. I can show this to you today. I was mad and I was angry. I wrote no and, on, and circled it. <laughs> what do you mean dream bigger? It's Sanctus Real. I don't even know them. I can't dream bigger than that. Seriously. Six months later, I promise I'm not making this up. My wife's my witness. I get an email saying, hey, my name is Mark Grohlman. Some of you guys know him. <laughs> that we haven't met. Heard you speak when you did that one thing at this one church thing. And long story short, we're doing this tour, and we had a speaker, and he told us that he's not our guy. And we feel like God said, you're our guy. 28 cities around the U.S. I had been married for like two months. <laughs> and I look at Ash, I was like, wow. The Holy Spirit one kid when he said, dream bigger. Can't tell you how many times people come up to me. I just did a Mav City tour, and people are like, oh, you know, people are always like, how, how'd you do this, man? How'd you get connected with Mav City? That's Toby, man. How'd you, how'd you tour? I think they want me to say, like, I don't know, man. I just call people at a hustle. <laughs> no. No. I heard the Holy Spirit say, step down, and I did by faith. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, preach this four message, and I did. And someone heard it, and they asked me if I wanted to go on a tour, and they've been asking me ever since. The only reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because of the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, fam, that same Holy Spirit is speaking to you in an inner voice. Now, I know some of you are thinking it, so I might as well go there. Can the Holy Spirit speak through an audible voice? I believe so. I do. I believe you can hear an audible voice of God. I believe it because... The people in the New Testament heard God's audible voice. And so if they have the same Holy Spirit we have and they heard the audible voice of God, then I have to believe we can hear the audible voice of God. And I know some people, I have never been there, who said they have actually heard the audible voice of God. I have never heard the audible voice of God. But I have many times heard an inner voice from God. And I know this all sounds kind of crazy, but what if it's true? What if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you this whole time and you're just now familiar with it? What if you've been thinking this whole time, that's just my thoughts, you know? Grim bigger, huh? it's just a random thought. What if that's the Holy Spirit? What if he has been dropping things in your heart this whole time and you just didn't recognize the voice? I'll give you a couple pro tips for hearing the Holy Spirit's inner voice. The first one is ask the Holy Spirit to just speak to you. That's it. Just say, what do you want me to do? I mean, we ask everybody else. We ask Google. We ask our friends. We ask our squirrel. We ask our pastors. Those things are all great. But ask the Holy Spirit. Remember that the Holy Spirit will never contradict God's word. 
Right? So if you're like, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Like, I think he wants me to, like, you know, cheat on my taxes. That's not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right? The Holy Spirit is not going to contradict the word of God. That's why the word of God is central in context for hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Number three, the Holy Spirit's inner voice. Come on now. Sounds a lot like your inner voice. God spoke audibly to Samuel, and he thought it was the old man, Eli. Right? I mean, he's like, ah, it must be this old guy calling me in his sleep. Is it possible that what you think is just your thought, some of it is actually the Holy Spirit? And last but not least, you're not going to know if it's the Holy Spirit unless you take your shot by faith. Make no mistake about it. I didn't go to Big B and blow everything up just because I was like, oh, I think it might be the Holy Spirit. No, I did that because I know that voice. I'm familiar with that voice. It's the same thing when Ashley and I were sitting down on our couch and Ryan Snow was like, hey, you want to start a church? And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> but I know the voice. And I literally looked at my wife. I'm like, babe, that's the same voice that told me to step down from Peace House. It's the same voice when we were in Haiti that told me that that girl is your daughter. You all need to adopt her. It is the same exact voice. I know that voice. So I'm going to follow that voice by faith. You are here today. Because of God's inner voice, by faith, you'll never know unless you take your shot. But I promise you that God is speaking to you. You just have to be familiar with it, and you got to recognize it, and you got to trust by faith. And sometimes you're going to be way off, and that's okay. In 2020, I told our staff this was going to be the year of boring. <laughs> yeah, think about that one. <laughs> Literally, one in a staff retreat in January. I'm like, I've heard from the Lord. 2020 is going to be the most boring year ever. We're just going to just plug and play. Three months later, the world blew up. <laughs> and they're like, what would you say about boring? I'm like, well, I'm going to go back to my prayer closet and check that one. <laughs> so what? So what if you're wrong sometimes? <laughs> right? He speaks to us through his word, through God's inner voice. A couple more here. The Holy Spirit speaks to us by faith, through dreams, and visions. Acts chapter 16. Listen to what happens. It says, Paul at night, the writer says, had a vision of a man from Macedonia standing and begging him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, he says, we got ready and we left for Macedonia, concluding that God has called us to preach the gospel to them. How did Paul know that God was sending him to Macedonia? Anybody? not a trick question. He had a dream. He had a vision. That's it. Is it possible? Yes. It's all of a scripture. So yes, the Holy Spirit speaks through God's word. The Holy Spirit speaks through our inner voice. But one of the other ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us is through dreams and visions. I'm sharing so much of my story today, and I'm a little bit hesitant because I don't want you to think, oh, Sammy is special. It's not special. It's ordinary people. I'll never forget when I was moving to come to America in 99, the fall of 99. My mom had a vision. She's watching right now. And she said, your ministry will start with Billy Graham. And I was like, don't care. <laughs> no, seriously, I didn't care. I came to Toledo, the College of Pharmacy. I was just coming to make as much money as I could. I'm coming for the American dream. I'm like, I love Jesus. Don't care about ministry. Will never work at a church. Never work at a church. All right, mom's like, okay, but just letting you know, God gave me a vision. Your ministry is going to start with Billy Graham. I came here. The Holy Spirit blew up my mind, my heart. All I wanted to do was ministry. I didn't know where to start. I dropped out of college. I had one contact in Ohio, and it was my uncle that lived in Cleveland. I told him, I feel like God's calling me into ministry. And he says, you're crazy. He was in ministry. He says, I think what God wants you to do, it's a true story, is move to your sister in Phoenix, Arizona. That's all you've got. And if you don't do that, man, we're breaking all contact with you, and this is it. That was a true conversation. I remember going to God. I said, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know anywhere to turn. February 4th, 2000, I have a dream. In my dream, literal dream, I'm at a crusade. And I'm sitting there. as a big old stadium in this dream. And I'm like, what am I doing here? And the person next to me is like, oh, you're at a Billy Graham crusade. I'm like, oh, really? This is a dream, true story. And I remember thinking in my dream, oh, man. If only I could just talk to Billy Graham, he would know what I should do. And all of a sudden, instant, I'm in an office. 
and he's standing right there. And I, it, it looked like Billy Graham, but it didn't look like him. I couldn't see his face. And he's like, you have a question for me? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And before I could say it, he's like, yes, God wants you to stay. Oh, man. I got up that morning. I said to him, man, I feel God wants me to stay. And he's like, you're crazy. I have not had one conversation with them since then. Broke everything off. But I did by faith through a vision and a dream that God gave. Now, to put it in context for you, I've had maybe three good dreams in 20 years, so don't, don't get all excited. The rest of my dreams are as lame as yours. But sometimes God will speak through dreams and visions. Number four, and this is our last one, is that I believe that God speaks through God's people. Right? I'm just reading one last text real quick. We're running out of time. But Acts chapter 10, God sends Peter. This is amazing. God sends Peter to go minister somewhere, and Peter didn't want to go. He's like, God, I don't want to go. And so guess what God did? God gave Peter a vision like we just talked about. But then God didn't just do that. The Holy Spirit, listen to what the Holy Spirit, the whole, he says, while Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Simon, there are three men who are looking for you. Go downstairs. Don't hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. So not only did God give Peter this vision, God sent three other men. And so it says in the next verse that Peter went down, and he said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? And this man says, well, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He's a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. And here's why we've come, buddy. A holy angel appeared to him and told him to come to your house so that you could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the man into the house to be his guest. I don't know if you're catching this or not, but the Holy Spirit wanted to send Peter somewhere. Peter was hesitant. Holy Spirit gave him a vision. He said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send three dudes that you've never met before, and I'm going to give them a word to come give you. One of the ways that the Holy Spirit speaks through us is that the Holy Spirit will speak through other people who love God and will speak directly into our lives. Can I give you an example that will blow your mind? A year and a half ago, I started working on this book that you see right here. All right? Nobody knew it. I've been writing for a long time. I don't know why. So insecure about my writing. And I just wasn't sure. If, if I just, I didn't tell anybody, and I, I felt like God wanted me to write a book about friendship, and I, I felt like, you know, God was like, I don't want you to just write a book, I want you to write a series of books. And I was like, this is crazy, I'm not an author, I can talk, I don't know if I can write. Then I get this text from a guy that hadn't texted me in a year, over a year, out of nowhere. The picture is on the screen, I want to give you receipts, you can't read it all, but listen to what he says. He says, bro... Either I totally lost my mind or I might be hearing from the Lord. There's that faith part right there. He says, I certainly hope it's the latter. I think of you sometimes, but not continuously day after day for a few weeks, which is what's been going on the past couple weeks. He says, first of all, there's anything I can pray for you about, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, get to it, get to it. He says, second, here's the real reason for the text. Every day, he says, in the last few weeks, you've popped up before me, and it's as if you were handing me a book to read. I was holding a book in my hand. Listen. He says, I've known you to be a good pastor, even better, teacher of God's word. And I've asked you, have you been working on any books at all? Have you used the quarantine time to do some extra writing that maybe you want to publish someday? I just feel like there's a publishing grace on you for this season. I feel like the world's ready not just to hear from you, but to read from you. I have a feeling that some of the things you write wouldn't just be standalone. It'll be a part of a series. He ends and says, bro, I wrote this. I freaking hope this makes sense because it's all I've got, look at my response. I says, dude, smiley face. I kept calling him. He didn't answer. I'm like, let me know when you're there. I'm like, JJ, you there? And then I sent him this next one. If you could turn there. This is receipts within the receipts. My wife's the only one who knew I was working a series of books. So I sent his text to my wife, and that was her response. My wife is freckles. She's like, who's that from? Whoa, is that a prophetic word? Fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. I'm like, what do you think? Then the next slide, I sent him just so he could see if he could put that up on there. I'm like, look, two weeks before, I had just bought a domain name for a book. Nobody knew. Do I have that image? I don't have that third image, do I? It's all good. It's right here. I'm like, hey, man, guess what I was doing two weeks ago? I bought a domain name for a series of books. I didn't tell a soul. I literally told my wife. I'm like, babe, 
did you talk to JJ? She's like, no, I haven't talked to JJ in like years. I'm like, me neither. This makes no sense whatsoever. He didn't just nail it. It was to the specific detail of what I needed to hear. And I'm telling you right now, we're running out of time. But this is normal in the story of God. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but anytime I'm standing up here before I come preach, I got my phone almost every week. I'm not distracted. You know what I'm doing literally every week? I am texting people. I got people in the room, people who are watching, who I know that God speaks through. And I'm like, hey, you got anything? Is God saying anything to you? Because I am expecting that the Holy Spirit's going to speak. And if he's not going to speak it to me, maybe he's going to speak it to someone else. Last week, I got a text from somebody who was sitting right there and he's like when you were preaching I had this vision from God and I just want to share with you the week prior to that I went up to get prayer and the guy that was praying for me said hey I didn't tell you this but two weeks ago you were preaching and I felt like God said blah 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 and I'm like first of all I'm mad that you didn't tell me two weeks ago what God said to you but thank you so much will you please pray for me it is the norm can you guys imagine a church where this becomes normal can you imagine a church it's not just pastor here. Everybody hears from God. Imagine a church where you walk in, man, and before you sang a song, somebody you didn't know came up to you and said, I don't know you. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if this is the Chinese I ate last night or if this is God. But I just felt like God wanted you to know that he sees you and that he cares for you and he sees your tears and you are special and he's got an amazing plan for your life before you even walk in here the holy spirit is speaking to you imagine a church where it's normal for us to breathe encouragement for the holy spirit to speak to us through people of god and i've had people tell me things that are way off but i don't care it's by faith i've been way off many times i tell people like you tell me all right i'll let god worry about that God is speaking and oftentimes he's not just speaking to you he wants to speak through you give you a couple pro tips and then we'll pray ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you be open to the Holy Spirit speaking through others to you the reason so many people tell me things they hear from God is not because I'm the pastor no it's because I tell people man I am open I don't care who it is I will listen I don't care if it's a kid I don't care if this is your first time in church I will hear what God is saying through you by faith and last but not least are you open to the Holy Spirit speaking to others through you what God wants to do he doesn't want to just do in you God wants to do through you and there are going to be people that you're going to see in the room and you're going to be like, man, I just feel like I should give you a hug. I just feel like God wants you to know you're amazing. And so many of us are like, oh, it's just a random thought. I just feel like, Joe, you should come up here and grab the mic from me and say something in the middle of a sermon. And God's like, yeah, that's right. Because that's me speaking. You guys stand. We're going to pray a prayer. We're going to pray the prayer today that Samuel prayed. He says, Lord, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you are able and willing, if you just open your hands. I know we keep doing this, but, but, but opening our hands is the universal language of surrender. It's our way of saying yes. You don't have to do it. No one's going to judge you. But if you want to hear from the Holy Spirit, just open your hands and pray this prayer. Say, Lord, speak for your servant is listening. Holy Spirit, we believe that you're still speaking to us today. We thank you for what you've already spoken through the Word of God. But we are believing that you still speak to us, that you are speaking right now in this room. And you're speaking life. You're speaking encouragement. You're speaking grace. And so we say speak. Speak, God. We're speaking through babies. <laughs> speak, Lord. It doesn't have to be weird. But we want to be naturally supernatural. So Holy Spirit, we say if you have something to say, then we will listen. So just pray that. Just go ahead and just pray that in your own words. Tell the Holy Spirit to speak. Speak into my situation. Holy Spirit, speak into my anxiety. Speak into my pain. Speak into the life of my kids. Speak into my marriage. 
Oh, God, we need to hear from you, Holy Spirit. We don't need to hear from any other pastor, any other podcast or YouTube thing. God, we need to hear from you. We need your voice to speak to us. Give us the grace to hear you and the grace to respond by faith. Holy Spirit, remind us of what you've already said in your word. We want you, and we want you to move. Speak, Lord, for we're listening. Speak, Lord.